lost. There is always a hope. Rise and fight. Hello and welcome back everyone to BSL 17 Round of 8. I'm Machine, joining with me today is uh, my good buddy Nyok in here. What's up, Dan? What's up, Machine? I'm looking forward to these games because they got they my favorite Terran player, Mihu, facing off versus Eon Zerg. And I'm thinking back to the seasons that I did see Mihu lose. Well, lose some games at least. Uh, who was it? Yeah. Was that um, aggressive? Oh, Dugu, <laughs> oh. like he ling all in, yep. right? Now, not saying Eon Zerg is a ling all inner, but he's an aggressive player. And if that type of style is effective versus Miku, I think Eon Zerg's got a decent shot versus him. Yeah, absolutely, man. I think even uh, the other match that Miku dropped a series from was was it Ziki as well? Oh yeah. So, mm -hmm. so maybe uh, you know. Maybe there's some flaws in the matchup for him, right? Like when I think Bihu, I think like indomitable force TVP, right? Like he really has that matchup on lock. Um, so, you know, he, for whatever reason, he, it felt like the previous seasons, he's been hitting a lot more Protoss than anything else. So uh, maybe there could be some chinks in the armor here, something that Eonzer could hopefully uh, look to expose. But I mean, uh, you see the three champions there, bottom right, right? Like, he, he is going to be a big, big force uh, to try to stop uh, here for, for Eon Zerg. It's going to be a tall task, but uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes. Yeah, definitely a tall task for Eon Zerg, but, you know, he was champion in Season 5. Then afterwards, he still did pretty well. He took a long break, and now here he is again, back in Season 17. Um, you know, in the previous games that we've seen on Eon Zerg, he uh -huh. had some interesting builds versus Wolfix. Actually, Wolfix had a, a good shot of taking down Eon Zerg. So in that sense, I feel like you kind of really have to favor Mihu. But I don't know, man. Eon Zerg's always surprisingly strong. Like, even when he doesn't play, he always comes back and he's like 2,500, 2,600. He's always very high on the ladder. Always, man. And, you know, when he he's definitely like somebody who puts a lot of time in once he commits himself, you know, like I've been checking out the Eon Zerg streams, you know, going into this BSL for, uh, you know, a couple months now. And I'm he's looking like he's in pretty top form. Um, he's also a Zerg who's not afraid to, you know, uh, experiment a little. You, you see him kind of play different styles, more heavy mid game, like ZVT timings, I would say. Um, so if you're not prepared for someone like Eon Zerg, he will catch you off guard. Uh, and it looks like the first map going to be Circuit Breakers here, folks. Uh, Mihu ended up banning Shooting Break for the series, and it uh, uh, looks like Eon Zerg has banned Polypoid, so we won't be seeing those maps for sure. But uh, CB, pretty you know old school map, definitely unique. Uh, I feel like you saw a lot of mech in this back in the day. Um, but yeah, with that, folks, it looks like both of our players are ready to go. Let's jump into this round of eight winner's bracket match. It's going to be Eon Zerg versus Mihu on Circuit Breakers game one. And spawning bottom left as the red Zerg, we have Eon Zerg. Yep, and in the bottom right, we have our Chinese Terran. It is Mihu. And are you sure you were saying the name of the map right, Machine? I thought it was Zergit Breakers. Uh, yeah, you're, uh, my bad. It is Zergit yeah. Breakers. Yeah. <laughs> what was I thinking? <laughs> stupid, stupid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I can just see you slapping your head right now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, man. Dude, I, am I wrong? Like, did you... Was there, uh, back in the day, I feel like Goliath timings, right? Like, two base, like, four or five fact Goliath push was really popular on this map. Oh, yeah. So the thing is, is when mech switching was a, a real thing, at the time, this was the map to be playing on. There was no polypoid. You know, the only other standard map back then was, what, Fighting Spirit? So I think right. it was just coincidence, really that Circus Breakers ended up being a mech map. I think it's a great mech map. I, I, in general, think any map is a good mech map, but 
yeah, there were definitely a lot of mech switches on here. Mihu doesn't really seem to be like a mech switcher, though. You know, if this was Schwan Chuan right. or one of the other Terrans, uh, I could see it happening, but I think Mihu's just going to be in your face all game with Marine Medic. I, I feel like I remember seeing him do like 1-1-1 one, one, one builds occasionally as well against Zerg, but yeah, th we're not seeing that gas in the main. It's already kind of a telltale sign that this is just going to be standard one racks into uh, CC expand here. Uh, looks like it's going to be Eon Zerg getting the first scout though. Uh, we're seeing that scouting drone moving towards the bottom right. Uh, still no Vespian Geyser in the main here for Eon Zerg, so likely going to be that 2.5 hatch variation if gas hasn't been taken by this point. Um, that's really coming back into popularity. Yeah, I think if Eon Zerg plays anything other than 2.5 hatch, I think he's in trouble. And as I say that, I don't see the gas coming down at around yeah, the 215, right. 220 mark. So this is going to be 3, three hatch? I don't know, man. Like, the first games we saw of Mihu, what was it? There was another four-player map or a three-player map. I Actually, I think it may have even been Circuit Breakers. I just remember Mihu literally sitting outside of Ziki's base the entire game. And you cannot let Mihu get away with something like a five racks. Yeah, you absolutely cannot. He just knows how to put the pressure on, man. Like, when I watch his barracks rallies, it's like watching Flash play like his mechanics are insane like he's not gonna forget a round of marines to pressure a third base that's exposed you know okay. it's yeah it's crazy well, well machine are, i know man. <laughs> not only is it three hatch it's also three hatch at another main i think if you play uh, this style taking the low ground is good you know the natural because then you can just sunken it up and defend that way then you have a lot of options you know you could go crazy zerg you could go just normal zerg and then power with a fourth base easily taken but now with it on the high ground you can't defend with sunkens that that can't happen right. if terran dies to sunkens attacking at top left well let's just say this terran deserves to lose at that point so <laughs> i i i'm really not a big fan of this opener however he could open lurkers maybe that's the way to defend this base I think you're right. I think you'd have to basically open lurkers because, as you said, it would just take too many sunkens to like creep crawl to that top left uh, ramp, you know. So I'm my gut instincts tell me this is going to be a lurker opener, but we'll we'll see. I guess. You know, I I prefer the style that you were saying though with this three hatch opener. Like, you know, delay the layer right, get zergling speed early like get your third base down and a couple sunkins at it and just play later tech but um, at least eons are will be getting that ling speed and it doesn't look like any pressure will be coming out of mihu just yet so eons are i guess it's he's kind of being allowed uh you know to kind of eco up here uh which could be you know uh tough for mihu to deal with honestly well, it's Spire, and it's a very fast academy. You know, it was like a 320 academy, and Terran knows where the base is. I, I just, I can already see it. We're going to get two medics, two fire bats. The Spire's so late because it's a three hatch. How are we going to kill it? And, you know, I was actually about to say this. He could even build a Rax at top left. So he could <sighs> pressure the natural, have the units all sitting outside the natural, and then actually he just comes in with, like, three marines, a medic at top left, and kills everything. Yeah, I think that's exactly what he's looking like he's going to do. He does scan the natural, sees that spire again. A couple creep colonies going to go down. So Eon Zerg is preparing, at least for some pressure. Even a creep colony top left. Wow, okay. You see, that's, uh, the, that's the thing, though, is like the creep colony, okay, it defends that mineral line. But, you know, if you just kill the gases, Terran, if I'm Terran and I delay your third gas, whether you're mining the minerals or not, I feel like I've already gotten a big win there. Yeah. I mean, it is a decently timed third base with, you know, a third hatchery. If it is allowed to, like, you know, he, he'll probably have to retreat back with all these lings, clear out, uh, you know, all that remaining bio once it is produced top left. But, I mean, a base is a base. It, it could help them out here. Well, I will say this. Me who's worker count despite seeing it being three hatch seems pretty low now this is typical eon zerg you're out of position i'm counterattacking. okay and that bunker may actually die okay he's just gonna run straight in the main now 
I don't really think this is gonna do much damage, but it keeps me who back, which is what you're looking for when you're opening free hatch. Because that just means that you can get your tech up, you can get all those bases up, you can get critical mass mutas, and look at this, he's even gonna take on a couple of SCVs. Yeah, Eon Zerg on top of this Zergling control, killing, I mean, quite a bit, man. Uh, yeah. I think that was a, a nice little counter for him. Yeah, that uh, went way better than yeah. I was expecting. However, there's those Marines that I was talking about. There's no, oh, oh he, he may actually it. have the perfect counter. How does he know? I don't know, man, he's insanely good. Uh, that sunken is really going to be a game changer here. Yeah, uh, you rarely ever say that, <laughs> but that is that's amazing. Yeah, I, I he obviously can't kill the hatchery, but if he can just bunker the extractor, that would be great for him. We got mutas across the map, and there we go. They're going to have an engagement here. Now, it was the rack opener from Mizu, so the plus one's going to be lacking. There we go. He picks off four marines pretty easily. I think he lost one muta, so already this is a pretty good trade. Yeah, pretty decent, but Mizu's still in it, obviously. We're seeing the start to peck away at that turret count. He's really I mean, just putting on so much pressure that uh, at the very least he's keeping Mihu back. Yeah, but look oh, at top this. left is under attack, it looks like. Yeah, that's... Oh my gosh, the single medic does not have enough energy. The <laughs> the drones almost win that fight, but they're going to have to run. The Mule is coming back, but still... You know, I, I was going to say, I thought Eonzerg was in a good position, but now this small attack just makes all the mutilists turn around. And, you know, what could have been maybe not necessarily a killing blow, but a crippling blow in Mihu's main, because Mihu only has two barracks. All of a sudden, the Mutalists are just completely on the back foot now. He has plenty of Lings, though, and a couple Sunkins at the natural. He's definitely going to lose his Overlord here, but I don't think Mihu quite has the force he needs to yeah. end this game yet. Yeah, this is a kind. This is kind of a just a weird situation because with Mihu rushing the third racks, his tech got delayed. He obviously can't get the units synced up together. We've got an engagement in the middle of the map, and I think the Mutalists could win, but they don't win just yet. Yeah, that barracks still doing some work, picking off an additional Muta top left there. Um, yeah, Zerg is able to finally get those drones back mining at the third base, but uh, that mining was stifled for quite a bit. Uh, 27 drones only to the 45 SCVs of Mihu. So Mihu definitely able to catch that eco up from uh, what you were mentioning earlier on. Well, despite the worker discrepancy, I actually think Eonzerg's in a good spot. And the reason I say that is because Mihu's factory like just finished. You have oh, science nice. facility coming at this point. So his science facility or his tech is literally like a minute and a half delayed from a normal game. If Eon Zerg can just stabilize his three bases, I think he's in a fine position. He can start getting macro hatches. He's got his lurkers coming. So I think he is going to stabilize, actually. And like I was saying, look, those starports just started at 945. That's crazy late. Yeah, that's very late. Uh, honestly, nice job uh, recognizing that. I, I didn't know until now. Man, uh, there are going to be lurkers on the way, though. So Eon Zerg not really playing risky at all. He's not skipping any kind of tech. I'd like to see an Evo chamber soon with plus one armor, but still, as you're saying, in a pretty decent spot. Yeah, he may try and go kill this this army that's sitting right there. I mean, he's got a lot of lings. Uh, maybe he won't. Okay, he's got three lurkers coming. And with all those lings to buffer, maybe he could get something something done. But there is a, there is a bunker, though, so this could backfire. I just... Oh man, if he uses whole position lurker here and clears this wave, that would be. Oh, here we go. Mihu engaging in. Nice burrow timing from Eon Zerg all over it. And Mihu wants to continue trading here. I don't know about this. I don't know about this. I mean, that's 11 new to this with the lurkers and the links. And you went two racks opener, so all your upgrades are delayed. And he ends up keeping all of his mutalists alive. And remember, the starports are so late, there's no vessels. There's no fear of a radiate. There's nothing. Mihu has so many SCVs. Like, actually, this is way too many SCVs. But uh, we'll see if he gets punished oh. for building so many. We've got the marine medic killing the lurkers. Oh my gosh, one lurker still alive. That scan not quite able to finish. And is Eonzerk doing it? Man. 
I mean, it, it looks like it, right? But you gotta remember, if Mihu just stabilizes his main, he's gonna have a billion, uh, a billion workers to rebuild his econ. But yeah, Eonzerg's in a good spot. I just keep looking at the worker count, and we're just still at 29. That's the real problem I see with Eonzerg right now, it's just the worker count is so low. Yeah, I mean, he's full committal with these mutas. They have to do this kind of damage, or this game, you know, if it's allowed to go on, he could be in uh, some serious trouble. But we are finally seeing that worker count go up. 33 drones now to Eonzerg. I guess he feels like he's done the damage he needs to start some type of a transition. Uh, but yeah, as you said, look, it, the uh, drone count is looking pretty low. I think he should sweep back around with those mutas and go to the main. He knows there's no turrets left. He's got to just keep Mihu back at this point. Yeah, it would be a great move, but as... As a Terran player, you know, thinking from Zerg's perspective, how could you possibly not have vessels ready at 12.30 into the game? I mean, that's just crazy talk, especially since he opened two racks. So I don't fault Eon Zerg for not risking his Mutalist because that's a big investment he could lose. But here he goes. He actually is going to go in. The scan was perfect, though, so this could be a mistake. Double Irradiate yeah. is available. Okay. He's got to cast it, though. I guess he's fearing that he may eraser his own SCV, so he doesn't want to use it. Oh, he didn't get it! Oh, he just forgot the upgrade. Oh, that's too bad. Man, everything going right here for Eon, sir. And look at that drone count now. 42 to the 49 SCVs. Once again, forcing another lift from Mihu in that, on that main command center. Eon, sir, has very comfortable lurker count. Fourth base on the way. He's got some Scourge to deal with these vessels as well. Well, at this point, Eon Zerg, there just has to be a catastrophe for him to lose this game. And there's the Greater Spire. I'm a big fan of Greater Spire. I think trading Irradiate Energy for one Guardian is amazing. And if you can split up the Guardians and just harass the Natural while they have to build more vessels or race or something to counter your Mutalist, while you're behind there, you know, pumping out defilers, lurkers, powering. I think that's a great, a great trade. But we do have a tank push, which I didn't even realize he was building tanks. I tell you what I don't see, man. I don't see a Nidus and I don't see a defiler. Yeah, I don't even know if he has consume. And I can tell you, Eons are wishing he morphed his guardians on the left side of the map now. Yeah, some guardians would be perfect to defend this timing here. He's definitely going to need to run back with these Scourge as well. This, I think he's dead. I, I don't see how he can stop this army now. His Defilers, they're super late. This push is super late, but it doesn't matter if there's no Defilers. Yeah. Oh, we man. Go. Okay, there we okay. go. At least we have a Defiler. So now the game's its going to go on, at least. Oh, boy. But still, Eons are waiting to the wire <laughs> to, to cast that Swarm. Well, and there okay, we go, Nidus was... Canal. Yeah, I was about to say, I hope he doesn't forget about his Guardians, because if you just lose your natural and you don't counter at all, well, then the the entire strategy is just horrible for you. His Hive is super tanky, so I don't think that's going to die, but his Greater Spire is going to die, and we've got an attack going down or going towards top left. There's still no secondary Dark Swarm. If he could get another Dark Swarm down and kill those tanks, uh, he would be in a good spot. Yeah, or even a Plague, right? I think he's had the... Uh... Defiler Mound long enough that he, you know, possibly could have Plague at this point, and a nice Plague might even end this oh timing. Oh my gosh, he lost his Hive. Oh, this is horrible. Okay, however, there's four Lurkers here, and that means that this base is not going to be killed. There's no answer to the Guardians just yet. There are Devours, and there are some Scourge. This Command Center could die. That was another Vessel Round, so there's no Wraith. A single Dark Swarm goes down to push back wow. the tanks now. This is a crazy game. That command center's dead. Dude, Mihu can have 50 workers or whatever he has, but if he doesn't have a natural command center, he's not gonna be mining. <laughs> well, the Guardians seem to have been taken down. But Mihu took a lot of damage. Eonzerk's not that he didn't take a lot of damage either. But I like his position more. He lost his natural, but he's got a lot of macro hatches. He can rebuild. He's got the technology. 
There is a drop going to top left, though. And I don't think, actually, Eonzerg has a lot of defense. Oh, he does have some defense up here, so that drop will be denied. May another command center being built, so Miku's going to double expand off of this. I think that's actually a smart move. We do have... Still no workers at the fourth base of Eonzerg. Eonzerg, if he can get his natural up and running, he'd still be in a good spot. He's starting to lose some wraith to some, or some overlords to some wraith. I still don't see Ultralisk Cavern anymore. I guess he doesn't have, oh, I guess he can't build it because he lost the hive. Okay, there you go. He's rebuilt the lair in his main, but there's no queen's nest. So this is a scrappy game. I guess the, the issue for Eonzerg now is, yes, he killed the command center, but he didn't really kill any of the vessels. So there's still six vessels that can just irradiate forever. This is this is not good for Eons. That's a huge marine medic army. And how are you going to defend this after you've lost all your defilers, lost all your lurkers? I can tell you, two sunkens, that ain't going to cut it. And he's just stimming for it, man. I think this, this may be it. I, I think that the multicast has this... Oh, actually, there's a single... Or two single lings, they are trying to save the day. Lurkers through the Nidus. Can they do it though? I, I don't know if they can do this. There's there's still six <laughs> still six vessels available for radiate. Spawning pool's gonna die. Queen's nest died. The Marines can just get behind the mineral line. There's still that drop at top left, but we haven't seen any movement from it yet. I think that Eons are about to lose his whole army because I imagine that the Marine Medic are heavily upgraded. Oh man, supplies have plummeted now. Down 60 supply. It was even a moment ago. And now remember, he used all, or he sent all this stuff through the Nidus. So Mihu knowing that, drops top left. He knows there can't be anything here. And this is, this has got to be GG, I imagine. There's just way too much action going on across all the map. Eons are, can't keep up the pace. Lings and... Hydra, and he didn't even move his lurkers either, so there's no way that this army can die. Firebat's killing every single drone, and what looked like a good position for Eonzerg. I think we're moments away from seeing the GG. Lurkers, you gotta burrow, man, please! Okay, big hit right there, but I don't even know if it matters at this point. There's just too many vessels. There's too much Terran. Terran double expanded off of this, so his econ's fine. Zerg is struggling to stabilize. I, I guess actually he saved bottom left. I see all of the blue dots being taken down, but there's another huge army coming towards the fourth base. And if there are tanks here, I don't think there's any counterplay. It doesn't seem like there is, but I don't even know if there's any counterplay in general because the vessel counts at seven now. Oh, D-Matrix is gonna be it. I've seen this before. I've seen enough rush games where you see him double the Matrix, the Marines, or the Firebats, and this could be it. I guess the two Lurkers will save the day for now. Quad D Matrix. There's only one Medic, though. Only one Medic. He's gonna go for it anyways. He focuses down the Lurker, and that's gonna be all she wrote, unless this counterattack at bottom middle can outright end the game, which can't imagine it will. Man, this is heartbreaking. Eonzerg was so close, I felt like, to just picking apart Mihu, but Mihu, the master of Terran versus Zerg, Terran versus Protoss, his multitask is nuts. Even though he missed a radiate, even though he lost a lot of SCVs and had his hidden third racks countered, in the end, it just doesn't matter. Yeah, I cannot believe this. I, uh, you know, my internet disconnected, but oh my gosh, what a insane freaking comeback here from Mihu. I, he was dead, man. I don't know how you come back from that. <laughs> I don't know how he comes back from it either. He lost so much. He lost his command center. And now Eons are like not mining. I keep looking at his money. It's like consistently 50, 75. The hiders are running in, but they just don't have the damage for upgraded Marines. Yeah, they really don't, man. Ugh. Losing that hive just ended up being so painful for him, right? Like, if you see that, if that hive was placed in the main instead of the natural, this could be a different game. Like, that, that you know, something as small as that could have affected this. It's kind of crazy. Yeah, even though Eons are going to lose this game, I think he should f find solace in knowing that, hey, it was, like, really close, right? Like, there was opportunity 
for me to win. It wasn't like I got blown out. Like, in fact, I was winning at points. So I think if he just solidifies his play in game two and game three, he can definitely do it. I mean, he's 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 still not GGing out. I mean, he's dead. But, you know, it, did, it took Mihu, like, 18 minutes for Eon Zerg to finally break. Yeah, absolutely, man. And, I mean, more, like we're saying, more than break. He almost killed him, like, yeah. a handful of times. Uh, Eon Zerg was in some dominant spots in this game against a very challenging player, man. I mean, Mihu is three-time champ for a reason, you know? He just he just doesn't lose, man. He enters BSL every single season there's only one Terran it's him and I'm like wow <laughs> Terran's not gonna win this time and of course he just goes the distance and Eon Zerg he taps out and that means Mihu will take game one and obviously game one always very critical and best of best of series I think in ASL in fact if I remember correctly the person that won game one in the finals every single season of ASL they ended up winning so that's how important winning the first game is yeah, it's, I mean, it's, it's sets the tone, right? You know, Eons are, can't be feeling great uh, having lost that game, especially when it was in his grasp, for sure. So, uh, yeah, Mihu got to be pretty happy with his uh, play, though. Honestly, he's looking very, very strong as we knew he would be going into this. And also, Circuit Breakers, you know, as far as, like, maps to start off on that are not standard, he at least, you know, gets that one out of the way. So now he can kind of go towards playing some of the more modern maps, which he's likely going to feel a little more comfortable on as well. Yeah, I wonder what Eon Zerg will pick. I remember in ASL, he was always telling me he liked Invader, but before ASL started, me and him had a conversation about the ASL maps. And I was saying, like, I just don't see how Zerg gets a, like, maybe they can get a third base, but how the hell do they get a fourth base? Uh, but then after playing, some of the latter games, he was actually telling me he liked Invader. So I don't know what your opinion of Invader is, but uh, maybe he could whip it out. Yeah, I don't know. The, the that like high ground third that doesn't really lead towards a fourth. It, it's not. It's personally not one of my favorite maps for Zerg vs Terran. But you know, with Eon Zerg style, that you know double ramp positions leading to your natural. There's definitely going to be a lot of play for. Uh, you know, Zergling run buys, uh, meta timings uh, on that natural. So I could see why Eon Zerg would favor it, honestly. I'm trying to think of what other maps we have in uh, ESL. Got Retro. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, that's always a good one. Apocalypse, uh, Neo Dark Origin. So um, yeah, it's the, the bands, once again, were uh, shooting break for Mihu. No, no surprise there, right? No, who I haven't seen uh, too many matches on Shooting Break because it seems to be such a popular ban, and it's it's very unique compared to the uh, the rest of the maps. And then Polypoid being Eon Zerg's uh, ban, so very safe, very standard map. Uh, he knows, you know, me who's probably played a billion games on it, and doesn't want anything to do with that, you know. <laughs> For sure. So actually, I think if I was Eon Zerg here. Wow, I cannot believe this that he's picking retro because we've talked about since me and Ian Ian Zerg have casted so many ASL games, we've talked about how powerful this map is for Terrence because of the walling potential. We've seen players like JYJ just play almost any build off of a wall and just win the game. So I'm shocked that he picked retro, but he must have something planned for it. So let's get into game two: Mihu versus Ian Zerg on retro. And spawning a top left, the Chinese Protoss, uh, or Terran player, uh, it is Mihu. <laughs> yeah, and in the bottom right, we've got our European Zerg. It's Eon Zerg. I, I really can't believe he picked this map. I mean, it's just so good for Terran. It is so good for Terran. And I think because we've seen so many Zerg players actually have winning uh, games on Dark Origin, I think that could have been a good map, but actually I was thinking that Eon Zerg would pick Apocalypse, because Apocalypse is a map where there's huge travel distance between your main and natural, you have the yeah. high ground over your natural, we know Eon Zerg's a killer with the Mutas, I feel like that map was designed for him, I was very surprised he didn't pick that. 
Yeah, same here. I gotta say, Apocalypse, one of my own personal favorites against uh, Terran for sure. Uh, also, like the drop potential on that map for Zerg, I I think it's one of the few maps where you can actually bring back like a mid-game lurker ling drop, and it it can do some serious damage to Terran there. Yeah, it's a it's a good map for Zerg, especially if you've got the good multitask and you know you have the the I don't know how to describe it, but like the the mindset of knowing that hey, Terran's out of position and it's a long travel distance, I should go for a counter. You know, it can make the game yeah. really that weird. Killer we know, yeah. That killer instinct. Yeah, we know, we know he has. Yeah, for, for sure, sure, man. Uh, he, I, he, you can't give you know him any opportunity. We saw it game one, right? That lean counter. Uh, he he did to Mihu. It it pulls units back. It gets him out of position. He did a decent amount of SCV uh, kills to begin with, and that's something you you hardly ever see, uh, you know, get executed as well. Um, and you know, for most high level Zergs, it's you know, Marines shoot. They do a lot of damage. It's it's tough to sneak by sometimes. <laughs> Well, I'm happy to see this opener from Ian Zerg because I think this fits his style of play better. Just in your face, aggression, make Terran, even, even if you're not being aggressive, at least make Terran think that you could be aggressive. Don't let Terran get away with murder. Not have, you know, 57 SCVs on two bases. That's absurd. Uh, so already I like Ian Zerg's build a lot better. And this was an incredibly greedy opener from, from me who like, he didn't build a Marine. He wasn't even sure. If Zerg had gone pool first, so yeah. Mihu again gets away with a, an amazing. He still hasn't built Marine, so he's gotten away with a really great opener. It's already walled off, you know. At that natural, it's going to be uh, pretty tough for Eon Zerg to breach and do any damage, even if he started uh, Ling production now. A little bit of harass going down on this uh, SCV though, the command center. Eon Zerg saying, yeah, if you're not going to make a Marine. Oh, there is a Marine. It's just on the other side of the map. <laughs> yeah, I, I was sitting here. I was like, wow, not only did he get away with this amazing opener, he didn't build a Marine, but somehow he still doesn't have a Marine. He's going to lose this SCV to a drone. So we just completely missed it. But it gets denied. And now Eon Zerg is ra uh, really pumping up that tech his layer's already halfway done in fact i think this is an ebay opener from me who what's this huh just wants to get earlier upgrades and play more for uh late game i guess i don't know hmm. i was expecting him to two racks real quick but he's rushing the ebay for fast plus one he's still got the incredibly fast academy so he's getting all the upgrades his his marine count is extremely low so he does need to be careful to not lose anything, because if he does, uh, he's going to have to build that bunker, which you do not want to build early in the game with a build like this. I like him posturing out on the map with the two Marines, right? Like, he used that SCV scouting to its full potential, saw the Ling count, knows exactly where he can walk that line up to, and, you know, at the same time, trying to bait Eon Zerg to make additional Zerglings. Uh, but he doesn't, and Eon Zerg is, he's, says, you know what, I think I know what you're doing, and there's no more Marines walking across the, the map, I'm, I'm good with two Zerglings. <laughs> yeah, and I like this hatchery from Eon Zerg, you know, when you open like this as Terran and you see that it's a fast two hat, or two gas, or two hatch play, you're expecting Zerg to... Or you're expecting Terran to go for two racks, but that's not the case. So if you had put in a third hatch out on the map, it could have gotten busted easily. So I think this was a smart follow-up from Eon. Sorry, this is going to be four rack, man. Wow. Yeah, that's going to be a lot of barracks. It's going to be a lot of bio, and it's all going to be upgraded. So uh, it looks like Mihu off to a really good start here. Eventually, this is just going to be a lot of pressure. Eon Zerg is going to need to take a third here but we're, we haven't really seen a drone out on the map yet. Oh, he missed it. He just barely misses it, so he's going to think that there's a hatchery out on the map somewhere. But we know that that's not the case. SCV does confirm nothing bottom left, nothing bottom middle. But he may be thinking that, hey, he must have something at top right. I'm sure that SCV is going to go over there, but... Oh, that is a evolution chamber machine. Hmm. I think this could be... 
just a straight sprint to ultras or maybe muta ling pressure mid game yeah i actually think this is gonna be muta ling i think he's gonna try and end the game or he, i think he's gonna try and catch Terran out in the middle of the map then maybe go for a killing blow with lurker follow-up it could be ultraless but i have a feeling that that's the plan here so uh, Ian Zerg, he's looking to catch this bio ball in the center, but it's going to be really hard because Terran's already about to have plus one weapon. Yeah, and this is such a quick plus one as well. There, once that's online, Ian Zerg not really going to be able to trade efficiently for a bit. Uh, so it might give Mihu a window. Yeah, I saw Ian Zerg actually went for plus one armor curious why he ended up going for that. It's, it's going to be a good upgrade, you know, in general, but a lot of Zerg's players I see these days at least, they go plus one weapon. He does confirm the racks count, so he knows it is a four racks, and I knew it, Machine. We knew it. It was going to be Lurker extremely quickly. So this is going to be a catch in the center and an instant counter and hope that we win the game sub 10 minutes. I thought so, but we just saw a big round of drones out of Eon Zerg. There's not any Zerglings on the map at the moment. Um, I I don't know. I'm a, I'm a little worried. I, I kind of feel like if this was to catch it in the center of the map, he would have had to have already been producing those Lings. Um, yeah, that's true. So but where's, we'll where's our fourth base then? Like, if we're not going to try and end the game, what what's our game plan? Are we going to try and take bottom middle, mid right? I don't see a drone anywhere, unless that's at bottom middle. Yeah, it might be. Yeah, there it looks like it is. Uh, it's going to be a, another base at bottom middle, or at least he feels like he can't quite take it yet. Um, but yeah, Eon Zerg's going to need to get on that Lurker production, going to need to get on uh, making some more uh, Zerglings and Mutas here just to hold on. This is a lot of bio. Yeah, this is a ton of bio with all the upgrades already done. Range, stem, plus one weapon, all done. He hasn't lost any Marines either. He didn't kill any of the, the mutas, but I don't think Terran really cares about that. As long as they've got their own upgrades, they're going to be feeling pretty confident, especially since it's a four racks. We I, do I have three sunkens, and Lurker's morphing for Eon Zerg, so it looks like he's prepared. Yeah, At I least for he's... his natural. Oh, oh that's no. big. Well, the thing about Retro is that there is double ramps. It's going to be hard to get up ramps versus Mutalus. But Mihu has so much stuff, and I, I, I am looking at Mihu's main base. He's nailed his build, by the way. Those are star ports probably almost done in his main. So even if this fails, this is not going to be like last game where he's got 14-minute vessels. This is going to be him crushing his build, and me or Eon Zerg is going to be in deep trouble unless he can somehow get rid of this army. I mean, it is five lurkers, right? Like, I feel like one thing we see. He just likes attacking in the lurkers for some reason. <laughs> well, I, I don't know what... Oh my gosh! He scan again and he loses his whole army, so that's actually exactly what Eons are needed. Because even though Mihu's got four racks and he's crushing his build in terms of his starport timing... Uh... Yeah, that was, a, that was a blunder. For sure. Yeah. Man, that's yeah. twice now. I actually called it. I was like, he just likes attacking into lurkers, though. Because I got that same feeling on Circuit Breakers. I was like, wait, why is he going in here? He, he, there's just no reason to trade. But, eh, well. What's funny is he lost his whole army, and there's still not enough for Eon Zerg to counter. Okay, he's got a Vulture. This is, this is weird, because I actually thought this was going to be a delayed tank push. I, I think that Eon Zerg's build is you know, late on the hive, so a delayed tank push could could work. Oh, actually, I take that back, I guess, because he already has his hive done. Yeah, hive done, defiler mound, two evo chambers. Third base looks like it's well under mining. Uh, he's, once again, in a very good spot. This game looks like... Ooh! Oh. Whoa. No. What the? Oh, my, oh Why? my gosh. The lurker... Okay, the mutas are surprisingly strong with the plus one armor, and they all survive. Now all the medics are gonna die, but even though Mihu loses another army, this is seven racks production. However, this is starting to get in, 
get into a situation like we had versus Terror, I think, where if the Defiler can creep across the map, what's our counterplay to the Defiler and the Dark Swarm? We don't have very many vessels. We don't have any fire bats. Yeah, there. I mean, short answer is there isn't anything, man. Like he's got a, he's really gonna need to try to pick those off, and maybe that's what the vultures are for. Is he gonna go plant mines and hopefully try to grab some defilers or something? Oh, there is no mines. It's just speed vulture. I don't know what this is from, from me. Who this is? This is really weird. I think this is only intended to do a run by. But I don't know if I'm if I'm risking doing this just to have a two vulture run by, you know, like that seems yeah. greedy. I mean, you just gotta stay on top of the current Terran meta, Aoken. That's the, oh, it's the two vulture speed run by. <laughs> Why are you attacking into this, Bihu? He <laughs> he's got to. He's got to get rid of the lurkers before the filer gets across the map. If, if there's a six lurker contained with the filers, you're dead, man. I guess you're right. Man, I, I thought that was going to go way better for Eon Zerg that time. It seems like some upgrades are kicking in here uh, for Bihu. Yeah, 1-1, one, one, done. Uh, plus two underway. Oh, that's a lot of dead overlords. Yeah, what's funny is this, the way Mihu's playing is you would think this must be a mech switch because he's got speed on his vultures. You're only getting speed on vultures if you're mech switching. So this could be like a mind game going on. We've got Marine Medic versus Hydra. Hydra's are not winning this battle, I'm sorry. I, like, he needs to back up. I don't know what he's doing. There we oh, go. Oh, it is, it is Vulture Mines. What is going on, man? These I, games I don't, are bizarre. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I've ever seen Marine Medic Vulture Mine into Hydra Lurker. Like, mines just aren't great versus Hydras. Yes, they can connect. But A moved Hydras, a lot of times they just take them down. I feel like you need tanks here, but I guess... I guess oh my oh, gosh, don't lose those! Don't lose those! Somehow, four vessels ran over eight Hydras and none of them died. Where's the Defiler, man? I think... Okay, there we go. There's only like there ten Marines here, but it, it almost looks like the Marines are going to win. So there's the Dark Swarm, finally. Yeah, that should be enough. Finally, the Hydra's able to start pushing this back. Lurker's about to be morphed. Oh, wow. Yeah, I got a nice cancel on that. He has so many workers, man. He has 60 workers. His econ is crazy. But I, I'm worried but for him. Like, two bases. Yeah, like, uh, I, like, I realize he's on a roll right now, but this is not Circuit Breakers. This is not Polyboy, where you double expand. He's going to be mined down in his main and his natural. Like, as, like, in ridiculously fast. And then he's going to be down on one base with 60 work. Uh, he, he doubled expand. What a crazy guy. How's he going to defend top, middle, and mid left? Bunkers and fire bats, man. That's how you do it. Or he could start, maybe change it up going, like, BC. Just for the defense. I don't know. BC Instead, he's going to attack even more with two drop ships. <laughs> BC into Hydra Defiler, Lurker? Yeah, I don't not know. a good call. Yeah, Top middle's right, right. getting knocked down also. That's a dead command center. There's still no tanks. Marines are, are heavily upgraded. They've got 2-2. Two, two. The vessel count seems to have been reset down to, what is it, 3 or 4 right now? Yeah, it looks uh, like 3. Yeah, and Eons are looking pretty strong. Yeah, he's doing a good job here. If he can get bottom left up and running, he'll actually be in a really good spot. This is a very late tank switch like by the time he gets a, any critical mass of tanks they're gonna be on three armor so i'm not sure about this and this army is about to get eaten up so eon zerg he's doing really good right now he really just needs to take care of these vessels and make sure he doesn't get punished by a drop because i did see two drop ships were out at the rally point yeah he needs to make a defiler <laughs> too i mean he's literally just attacking with pure lurker hydra no laying, no, no defiler. It's a, uh, it's Manzerg, man. <laughs> yeah, he's making it work right now. It's doing well, but it's only three base Zerg. That's okay. And once this come up, it will be four base Zerg. But you know, there's a huge difference between three base and four base Zerg. So Eon Zerg really still needs to keep get this base up and running at mid left. I guess he somehow figured out there's a base at mid left. Okay, if he gets here before. 
Uh, no, oh, get out yeah. of the way, Hydras. Get the lurkers up there so you can kill the Marines as they come in. Oh my gosh, this could be huge. Yeah. Both the lurkers are getting irradiated at least. Tanks, though, trying to get into position. Big lurker spines taking out quite a bit of the bio here. Two tanks going to fall. And, oh, a swarm from behind. This is exactly what Eon Zerg needs. Oh, there's a drop in uh, Eon Zerg's main, though. He oh, lost everything. No. Oh, Look no, at the not like this. Machine. Oh, 26 drones now for Eon Zerg. Man, he was in such a strong position. There's no medics with that army in the main. So eventually, Eons are going to be able to clean that up here in a second. But still, only, that is massive damage. Not only does he kill the, the drones and everything. He, okay, actually, I guess it is going to get taken down. But, like, look at that evolution chamber. If he took down the evolution chamber, that would be heartbreaking. We've got a small Hydra, Lurker, Ling counterattack. There's really not that much bio. There are two tanks. I don't know what that tank is doing, but he's trying to get in there, and he's going to get taken down. Oh, well, maybe not. Well, I guess I'll retreat sometime. Oh! oh! Action. Nice. Action at mid-left at the same time. Lurkers, are, they're everywhere. That's an already loaded up bunker. Yeah, Eons are really just constantly putting this pressure on. He has a fourth base, but a drone count extremely low. It seems like he's kind of in a position where he needs to either commit or fully back off, you know? Yeah, I, I think actually Eonsar just has to go for the Hail Mary. Like, he knows he denied top middle. If he watched the replay from game one, he knows Mihu's just a madman in terms of SCV, so it's likely Mihu's mind out, which he is, by the way. So I don't think Eonsar is actually out of it just yet, but he's gotta kill this base. One Defiler would do wonders here. Oh, that's a lot of bio. <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't realize that that's so much bio up there with no Defiler. Yeah. Uh, bio coming down, wants to look for a fight. Eons are still just greeting him with pure Hydra. Yeah, the pure Hydra play, it's, it's not going to work out here. The vessels are still dealing a lot of damage with their irradiates. Eonzer, he's being pushed back, and once Migu pushes his back, he's going to know that he can kill this base at bottom left. So that's going to get knocked down. At the same time, he's retaking top middle. Okay, Nidus, but there's a billion medics here. Yeah, this is, is going to be it. There's just no sustainability without any defilers or zerglings. Yeah, this, this is going to be it. Mid left dies and wants mid left or bottom left dies. Mihu's just got too much. There it is. And that means that Mihu's up 2 0. But again, Eons are fighting chance there. Like, I didn't even see the drop until the entire base was wiped out. But if that yeah. doesn't happen, he was fine. I mean, more than a fighting chance. He yeah. had it. Again, yeah. he had it. It's crazy, man. If he. If he had one defiler there at the end with that last timing mid left, I think he still maybe has it, you know? Uh, yeah. That's, that's crazy. Uh, so he's playing super well. It's just not quite enough, it feels like, to, to come out on top against me here. Yeah, I well, don't know. Like, is there anything you can do versus me who it feels like even when he's even when he's not crushing you and he's back on the on the back foot, he still ends up winning. Like, think about how that game went. Mihu lost his first army for, like, three lurkers. Then he lost his second army. Then he ended up going vultures with speed, and I'm like, what? <laughs> and he still wins. Yeah, that vultures with speed was pretty cute. I... I haven't seen that, but I could have saw like those two vultures running to third base and getting a few drones or something like that. Keeping them alive and using them for mines was, you know, also ended up being pretty beneficial there towards the end. So keep play that you don't see very often. Um, but yeah, I don't know, man. If you're Eon Zerg, what, what do you think? Like, what's he got to switch up? How's he going to get this win? I don't know, but he better pick Apocalypse. I know that. <laughs> yeah. He's got to pick Apocalypse, man. This is this map was designed for Eon Zerg. This has got to be your pick. Please, Apocalypse, and just out Muta Micro this guy. Because of it being Apocalypse, though, Mihu may try and play Valkyrie style, because last season we did see him try and pull it out versus Sylphid. 
So right. because of that, it could be like, I know that you know that mutas are great on here, so actually if Eonzer goes like a three-hatch lurker all in, I think that could be good. Just try and blind counter Valkyrie. Even like a lurker ling drop mid game. Uh, okay, yeah. Or I'm that. telling you, it's it is strong on this map. Like a uh, little little I've seen it, but um, it will in fact be apocalypse here, folks. And with that, both of our players are ready to go. So let's jump into game three of Mihu against Eonzer. And spawning bottom left of Apocalypse as the Red Zerg, we have Eon Zerg. Yep, and in the bottom right, one game away, it's me who. And if there's any time to go for the drop machine, he got the, the right spawn just directly into the main. Yep, yep. Yeah, this is definitely the spawn you'd want for some kind of lurkerling drop timing. Uh, which, I mean, you just never expect it, right? It's half the reason why that kind of stuff works. Uh, so, uh, that being said, you barely ever see it in this matchup. So, Eons are likely not to do something like that. But, I think your read on Muta is probably going to be what we're going to see here. Yeah, this map is just so good for Mutas. I can't even begin to tell you how good it is. Uh, especially with that high ground cliff over your natural natural you, oh i love it <laughs> I love of course it, man. you do well, of course every zerg loves it it's just so <laughs> ridiculous <laughs> yeah i feel like jadong every time i play this map you know zvt like, yeah and then i realize they actually just can't see up there and that's why they can't shoot mm. me <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. what makes it hard though is because Terran knows how strong it is so you know, if you're playing someone that likes to mix it up, like, let's say you're playing Shine, right? Like, the pro? Like, he's going to be yep. aware that you know that Mutas are good. So he'll think, like, hmm, maybe you're going Valks. Maybe you're going 1-1-1 one, one, one straight Vessel. Well, you know what? That just gets obliterated by just what? Mazzling Lurker Flood. Like, yep. you just don't have any <laughs> units. So, like, this is a dangerous map for that because if you blind counter the Mutas, you're just so susceptible to any other all-in. Yeah, very true. Very, very true. This will be just standard two hatch from Eon Zerg, so I think you're onto something, man. This is, he's just gonna get that quick lair going, go spire, make some mutas, and take advantage of some high grounds. Yep, and Terran got off a good scout here, finds Eon Zerg first, and he sees that this is going to be the two minute gas, which is the normal opener. It's not 2.5 hatch, but this is gonna be low econ for Eon Zerg. So he's gonna have to really balance his SCVs or his, his workers, to make sure he's not lacking an econ because it can fall apart real quickly if you miss drones. Yeah, it absolutely can. At the same time, like, you know, a lot of Zergs like to make the quick six links here. Um, which I think that's actually what we're going to see from Eon Zerg. So he won't. I think he's going to make six lings and pressure. Um, this is something I remember you actually uh, giving me some feedback on. I didn't use to pressure at all, you know, back in the day nearly as much with these little six ling timings, but they can be pretty deadly if Terran doesn't, you know, make a bunker. Yeah, if you if you sneak lings at your natural like this, and the SCV doesn't see it, and they think you only have six or four or whatever, and you show up with eight, well, you can outright win the game. And even if you don't, if you just force a bunker, like at this point in the game where Terran wants to build an academy, Terran wants to build an eBay, like their entire Gosh. build is ruined. Now I realize you're sacking a drone for a, a round of lings, so I'm I'm not discrediting that, but Terran's build just gets completely obliterated. I gotta call out that he's there is trouble. no bunker right now. Yeah, yeah he's... if Eon Zerg didn't leave with that six ling, I think he's in way more trouble. Yep, and what's funny is I literally just talked about this to Eon Zerg in a cast I had just done, where there's a big difference between five lings versus six lings. Terran, when they see that, yep. they're not scared. Like, they're not gonna build a bunker because they know they can hold it. And that's exactly what has happened. Me who's now not been forced to build a bunker, his build doesn't get delayed at all. Where now as Eon Zerg, yes, he has one more round of lings, which could have been a drone, and that hurts. Yeah, it definitely does. Hmm. 
I'm definitely a big fan of just shoving with six lings. We do have ling speed now, so Eons are uh, trying to get a little fancy, maybe pick off an he's, SCV or two. He's trying to end it. He's got 11 lings coming, and this is going to hit before stem. No Terran goes Firebat before Medics, just because of how energy works. Uh, but okay, he caught him. He caught him, Machine. There oh is no stem. Gosh. There's nothing to drill on. SCV block is great, though. He leads it with the medics in the front, and somehow... Oh, here we go. SCV probably going to drill through here, but the last of the Marines are falling. There is a fire bat still remaining, though, with a Marine and a uh, couple medics, so looks like it's not quite going to be able to end it here. Ooh! Oh, this is what you think of when you think of Eon Surge. Just good link control gets into the main, has disrupted the entire mining at the natural and behind this is Spire's done. We have Mutalis coming out in the map. There's no turrets. There's no bunker. There's two Marines, three Marines. So the Munas may just outright end the game here. Yeah, there's no turrets on the way. And I mean, as we were saying, this is just about the deadliest map for Muta that you could play right now. More and more mining being uh, prevented here from Eon Zerg. Just a single Zergling left. Yeah, Mihu's in trouble. Eon Zerg has no Econ. He scans and he sees that Eon Zerg has no Econ, but the turrets are up. That's the thing. There's no turrets. Okay, I guess there's a couple turrets in random spots. There's not very many Marines though, but is five Mutilus enough to break the camel's back? I don't think so. The Marines are going to hold strong here. Oh, one Muta already down, and that's big. That's uh, not going uh -huh. to allow him to one-shot Marines. And yeah, Mihu just barely holding it out here he lost critical mass with when he lost that one muta and that means that marines just they're not gonna die and this timing from eon zerg is not gonna work i did see the academy just now started so there is no range on the marines so they're extremely weak in a in a, in a direct fight but if he can just build more turrets he'll be fine yeah he i think I think he knows it too. He's already got a sufficient like buffer mass of turrets. But actually, as I say that, Eons are finding a nice opening into that main mineral line here. Yeah, now he's in a, in the sweet spot. He also saw the academy was blinking, so he knows range isn't done just yet. So that means he's got the the go switch to try and pop some more SCVs, but not willing to commit anywhere. Yeah, looks like he's just kind of waiting for his rally point. Gonna gather up a few more mutas here. We even see some Zerglings outside the natural as well, so he might be sneaking in here trying to pick off these turrets and create an opening for himself. One Muta miss rallies and ends up uh, falling already, but Eon Zerg does have a nice pocket now to kind of play with. Yeah, I think me. well actually me he's going to move out. Is he a crazy man? He was on move command also. Dude, you, you don't have range yet. Yeah, it's got to be close. I, I think it's maybe seconds away if it's not already complete here. And he knocks down one Mutalist, but this this is so close. The reason it's so close is because Eons are still has no Econ. Actually, in fact, Eons are going for the, the game ending move. He's building Lings. He knows the Marines are moving across the map. This may just be a big fight right here. Muta plus Ling combo. Can they catch the Marines? They're retreating. He did. Wow. Only five Marines uh, remaining. There is a good amount of turrets, though. And Mihu smartly is building uh, a bunker. But there's, what, 10 Mutalists on the high ground here? You just can't mine here anymore. You're not allowed to, Mihu. Sorry. <laughs> this is against the rules. <laughs> yeah. You cannot do it. Wow, look how fast that turret dies. Yeah, Eons are really making the most of this. There is a bunker, as you said. SCV's being drilled back into the main. Oh, Eons are, though, might be able to pick up a nice uh, couple SCV kills here. I think he's done it, actually. Like, yes, he's all in, but Terran's all in. Terran doesn't have tech. Terran has two racks, and the turrets don't even cover his mineral line at any spot. Wow. Maybe he did do it. I mean, that would be incredible at this point. The worker count is basically even. Oh my gosh, he's got lurkers, machine. Yeah. This could be it. I can't believe he's affording lurkers on top of all this right now. Oh my gosh. Look I, at I, these I, 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 I can't see me who's stopping this. There's no way. He's basically not mining either. So there's going to be no way that he stops this. The only way that Eonzerg doesn't win this game 
is somehow the mutas and lings die before the lurkers? That that's the only way I can see it happening. No, not like this. Yeah, that was maybe not a great trade there for Eon Zerg. Lost quite a few Zerglings there, uh, which could have come in handy to help tear down this bunker. But I mean, look at the supplies. It's 49, 50 food for Eon Zerg to the 26 of Mihu. And there's only one bunker. One bunker can't stop six lurkers. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, oh, do it. Do it. Run in here. Lose Ooh. everything. Does get, get up a here. Nice SCV kill. He loves running into lurkers, man. <laughs> well, this is not a good sign for Terran fans because Mihu has like equal Marines to lurkers. He gets one lurker, but that's probably all he's really going to get. And this is going to be the killing blow. Eon Zerg, he's going to strike back in game three. So we're not out just yet, Machine. No, not yet, man. Eon Zerg getting it done there. And yeah, taking a big win, finally, uh, his first win in the series, man. And I, if you if you asked me mid-game in each one of those last three games, if I thought Eon Zerg was going to win, I would have said yes for the first two and no <laughs> for the last yeah. game, dude. Yeah. I don't know what's going on, but uh, man, that was an incredible comeback from a pretty rough position there for Eon Zerg, but... He's just so aggressive, man. I don't know how you prepare for that. Yeah, it's hard to prepare for Eon Zerg because you know he's aggressive, but you don't know what level of aggression it's going to be. Because the Circuit Breaker game, like he backstabbed you, right? But he wasn't right. all in with it. Uh, this game, he waited and he waited. Oh, you moved out? Oh, haha, I'm actually all in here. And he catches you with Lings, kills all the Marines, and then the game's just basically over. So it's really tough to play versus Eon Zerg. Uh, but now he's on the board. He's gotten one win. He's finally shown that, hey, Mihu, you can't just, you know, move command Marines w willy nilly. Like, you're going to get punished if you do that. So Mihu does need to be careful going into game four. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I think he's at least able to collect data, though, right? Now he's getting a little better of a feel of exactly who Eon Zerg is, like, you know, what he's capable of. Um, and I don't know, maybe that's maybe that's a bad thing, right? Maybe now he's like, oh shoot, this guy could do anything. He's, he could be a Ling timing, it could be Mutas, it could be, you know, some some Lurker into Guardian. Like, uh, he'll do it all. Uh, so, yeah. yeah. Well, speaking of being able to do anything, I don't know if you caught that bracket, but Mihu, he already made it to the next round with a 2-1 score. So, I mean, he literally can just do it all. Yeah, he really can, man. And he's kind of displaying it here uh even though you know he did lose that that last game he he made it quite a fight for eon zerg still uh, he's shown just incredible control we knew that was going to be a tough map going into it for uh tvz right so he's uh he's definitely got some options here yeah well now going into game four we only have two maps left i feel like it's got to be invader i think out of all maps that you want to play versus Zergon, this is easily the one that you want to play versus them. Dark Origin, even though I think it's a good map for Terran, for some reason, players in ASL, BSL have had good success in Zerg versus Terran. And here we are. It is going to be Invader. Let's see if Eon Zerg can close up the score 2-2, two two, or does Mihu move on? And spawning top left side of Invader as the blue Terran, we have Mihu. Yep, and in the bottom right, Zerg hopeful, it's Eon Zerg. Zerg hopeful, man. Still in it. Still in it. I wonder if he'll try and do the same build he did last game. Like, if you get a win versus it, and you've seen this player be out on the map a lot of the times you know he's willing to attack into lurkers he's willing to be aggro i feel like that could be another winning move just try and play the same style you just played yeah it's de i mean it seems to definitely be a strong suit of his right uh it's not the first time he's kind of caught me who uh with some you know mid-game pressure some unorthodox uh you know timing of flings or muta um so maybe not a bad bad call honestly um, you know, one thing I'll say is normally 
in just about every ZVT series, Eon Zerg is the type of Zerg that will likely mix in a pool first play at least once. Yeah. Uh, I guess we're not, maybe not seeing it here, but I wouldn't be surprised if we saw something like an 11 pool from him. All right, well, there it is, no. 12 pool. Oh, it is! Oh, man. I got lucky. <laughs> uh, yeah, he, he just likes to do this. And I don't think it's a bad decision, right? Like, uh, Eons are used to playing against more Terrans like, uh, like a Terror, right? Who will guaranteed punish you if you're not at least mixing in pool play occasionally uh, with, like, just his very strong eight racks openers. Um, but yeah, uh, does does not seem to be the case, though, here from Mihu. Well, Mihu's going to come in here and see that this is a late hatchery. So he'll know he needs to actually build some marines here before building his command center. I'm a big fan of 12 pool. But I don't know about it being on this map. And the reason I say that is because one of the powerful aspects of 12 pool is you get out the lings. If you get lucky and Terran scouts you last on a four player map, you can hold the ramp and then Terran has to make a guess. What is this? Is this three hatch? Is this Muta? Is this Lurker? But now he sees everything. So I don't know about this opener. Yeah, I think you can technically get like a slightly faster layer, slightly faster Spire just by opening 12 pool. So maybe he just wants the quicker, uh, quicker Muta or something. He's not morphing his lair right away. Okay, yeah, it was, I was speed. curious if it was going speed or something. Mm. He owns he's in trouble, man. He sent his lings out, but he didn't keep them out in the map long enough. Now, <laughs> me who knows, he doesn't need a bunker. He doesn't even really necessarily need to build more marines. He could just power really hard. So already, um, I am a little worried. I guess from Terran's point of view, I would be thinking like, okay, why are you... So so anxious to push me out of your base. Are you gonna go lurkers? And yeah. because of that, I actually would rush Academy 100% of the time in this game. And there it is. Yeah, you called it. Just because you think the, the threat of lurker is there. It is a walled map, right? So if it was some type of lurker opener, losing a couple depots for free is uh, never a good position to be in. Yeah, and you know, Ling Lurker is surprisingly hard to stop, even if you do have a wall. So uh, it's not going to be that, though, because I never saw the Hydrogen come down. I think Spire's at the bottom side of his base. There's the second barracks. But this second barracks, isn't it late? Like, this is really late, actually. Yeah, it seems a little late, for sure. Um, but uh, I don't think it's going to be a major impact in his build at this point. He's fully walled off. We know there's only four Zerglings from Eon Zerg at the moment. Like, there's there's no threat. Well, there we go. We've got the first Medic moving out. He may actually even consider moving out right now with just one Medic or one Fire Bat also. Okay, he's going to go, actually. Oh, he is. I think this is actually a good move because he rushed his Academy so fast. You know that the Mutas are going to be fast, but if you can make him build Lings instead of Mutalis... That would be amazing. Scan goes off in the main. Does see the spire timing. And oh, he's doing some good damage to an overlord oh. there, but not quite able to snipe it. Yeah, it's going to be the one fire bat, one medic uh, timing. I mean, if you're Eons, or you got to, or if you're Mihu, you got to expect a link counter. Well, he better. If he's watched any Eons or games, he knows there's going to be a link counter. And now I actually don't like Mihu's uh, move out. It's too slow. Mutas are going to be out in the field now. And he's just going to take a lot of SCV damage while doing nothing in return. Okay, actually, he did a lot of damage. He forced out three Sunkins? I completely missed that. Yeah, that's a, I mean, that's a pretty significant dampener to the eco there with three drones gone. Uh, yeah, a little bit of an overreaction for sure from Eon Zerg. He, he at most needed two Sunkins there. I'm surprised that these Marines actually make it back to safety, but you can see why that move out was was strong. Like, it just delays everything. It forces out three Sunkins. Uh, bottom left, I think Eonsberg even had a drone, or has a drone. He couldn't even build a hatchery there, so that's been delayed. 
And this is already just a great position for me who he's gonna take no damage in his main. There's only four, what is it, four mutas I think right now? So they don't even one shot Marines. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, just now gonna group up with the sixth one as well. Um, okay, this is a lot of mutas now. Nine mutas. Uh, drone count 22 for Eon Zerg to the 34. Uh, SCVs of Mihu. Finally, Eon Zerg immediately takes it and it gets scanned. So he already, <laughs> Mihu, yeah. you know, is looking uh, ahead to his next step here. Oh, Eon Zerg might miss Rally a Muta there. Nope. Now, what's funny is this base or this map also has the same intricacy as Apocalypse, where there's, you know, a cliff over the ledge, but I find it uh, much easier to deal with than Apocalypse. Now look at this. This was a good move. Split up Marines and Medics and see you later, four or five of them. Yeah, that's a big pickup here for Eon Zerg. I mean, somehow, man, he just, he finds himself in pretty good scenarios uh, mid-game. He has really good trading, uh, even against a player like me who... I actually think Mihu better get the hell off the map right now. I don't I don't see how 10 Muta lists don't kill this army. There's only two medics also. Every stim so punishing. Yep, he's stimmed again as well. Looks like Eons are going to reinforce with some healthy Mutas here and then probably going to consider going in. Yeah, you, you can't let m Marines get away with this. Like, you cannot let Terran players make moves like this and go unpunished. Somehow, Mihu does escape. Inevitable, inevitable death. I mean, those Marines should have been gone. Now the Mutas are going to try and find them, but they've already gotten back to safety. Yeah, they're all healed up. They have their buddy turrets. You know, guy just spinning around inside the turret to hang out with. Yeah. <laughs> I think Mihu's uh, got starports coming right now, too. So he's really crushing it with his build again. I had a moment where I thought this may be Jadong because this is t two groups of Mutalists looking to go for a killing move. Yeah, he needs damage at this point. Look at that drone count, 24 drones to the 43 SCVs. We do have a Hydrogen finally, some you know lurkers in production, but this is a lot of Muta and a big committal. And I feel like Eon Zerg's, he's got to get some kind of a trade for it. The, you got you to gotta jump on that, man. There's no turrets there. You have Marines just move commanding. You gotta get them, and he does kill three or so of them. So he's done a really good job with the Mutalist, but the real threat is, is Terran still gone unhindered, really? He's taken no SCV kills. He's still got his build nailed. His, the Marines are still at a, a decent amount. He's got five racks again. He's got a tank, or he's got he's got the add-on. I guess it doesn't necessarily mean it's a tank after I saw the Vulture on Retro, but I actually think it's gonna be a tank this time. Yeah, probably a good call. Uh, he knows this has been like a lot of Muta committed here. Hive has been kind of behind, uh, and he should be allowed plenty of time to pressure with this siege tank before defilers are out. Well, there's a weird looking building that went down at the factory, and I actually think it may be a second factory. Okay, it's an eBay. I was wondering what that was. So, double eBay, Marine Medic, upgrade is going to be coming in. Mihu still can't get across the map though. I mean, he's just stuck here. Look how punishing this little choke is. Yeah. Ooh, oh, might even oh. get the tank here. That's big. Oh, that's. If he could just keep delaying this timing from Terran, uh, Mihu could be in trouble. I mean, he's trading so well here. There's still no vessels. Irradiate being researched uh, and underway. Is he gonna kill what? it? What's Mihu doing, man? He's he's in the center of the map. He's not attacking. He lost his tank. He lost his. He's gonna lose both vessels actually. SCVs are off the line to repair. Mihu's not pressuring anywhere, he's just in the center, he's gonna lose... Okay, I guess he saved a Radiate, but he lost a lot for that. Yeah, he absolutely did, man. That was a very punishing move there from Eon Zerg. Finding himself in a pretty good spot. So yeah, two so... drones on gas, bottom left, Eon Zerg. Eon Zerg has done a really good job to just get a billion damage with these mutas. I mean, he just picks off a random bunker. You know, it's not a huge deal, but... It's free damage for you. Meanwhile, Miku's econ is still unscathed, really. He's at 51 workers. Yes, Eon Zerg has bottom left. But the problem with Invader is, where's your next base? Like, where do you take it? Are you going to take it on the low ground? Are you going to take it at mid-right? Uh, Invader is so tough to find a fourth base. 
Yeah, for for Terran, it absolutely. Uh, you know, Terran and Zerg, it absolutely is. Oh, look at this. Per why are you scanning there? I don't know, but it's a perfect scan. <laughs> I was thinking the same thing. What what a bizarre scan. Uh, man, Eons are really putting the pressure on here. Well, he's still this got a lot scary. of mutas. Yeah, he's still got a lot of mutas, but this is full commitment from Eon. Wow, he's still going for it? Well, he did kill the SCV building the bunker. He can oh, get on the minerals. Are we serious? He really could, man. Meanwhile, Mihu got a oh, counter no. bottom left, so that would um, be a dead base. Oh my gosh. Uh, the reason he has so many lurkers is because he moved them from bottom left. And that yeah. means this is dead. There's no Nidus. No. Yeah. That's a little rough. I mean, it, at least unfurl all your lurkers and like go in now, right? Like it's commit time. <laughs> well, I he can get... hit that mineral line with those yeah. top lurkers. Uh, oh man. Uh, well, I gotta give props to Mihu for that because I don't know if I would have even thought that those lurkers would have been moved because he did scan that there were lurkers there. I don't think I would have ever imagined that you're gonna move your lurker from bottom left. Now, this is a good move for me. He's gonna pick off a lot of Marines, but he didn't, like there's no larva there, so he can't rebuild the drone and rebuild the hatch. Like he's now just all in. Yeah, man, he was in such a good spot too. If he even kept like two lurkers on that ramp bottom left there, it would have been a big deal. Yeah, it could have gotten real dicey, but now I think Mihu's, he's just in the driver's seat. He's got, what, four vessels? He's got the tank. His marine count is huge. He's even setting up for a 360s round here. If he gets these lurkers, uh, there's really no hope for Eon Zerg. Uh, he really needs to keep them alive so he can at least use them to push with his defiler. Yeah, he does have Defiler Consume underway. Oh, it's Greater Spire again. Uh, yeah, this is a but... little different scenario, though, because it's so late in the game. Terran has six vessels in a second. Um, oh, my. Nice Lurker Spines there from Eon Zerg. Yeah. Is, if there's a Defiler right now where it can sync up after all the Irradiates get blown on the Guardians... Maybe he could counter and win? Oh no. Uh oh, these lurkers get caught. Oh, this is a nightmare scenario. I think this could be it. Well, I, I guess he's got to have energy. Does he not have any energy? Or he maybe he doesn't want to waste. I, I think he does. I think he just used them all on the lurkers at the bottom side. So actually, there's not an answer to these five guardians, but at some point there will be. There's only Defiler. one. Defiler! <laughs> Oh, is there a defiler there? There he is. Okay, get in there. Get in there, fella. <laughs> oh, man. He's in. <laughs> He's in. Lurker is down. Oh, man. Mineral line is being torn up here. And still, there's no answer to the defilers quite yet. He's having to use that array. There we go. One irradiate going down on uh, one of the guardians here. And it's at least given Eons Zerg enough pressure yeah. to be able to take a, a third base at the moment. So yep. the game will continue on. Yeah, well, this is pretty much what I was talking about. You make the uh, vessels use all their energy, and then you just have the Defiler and Lurkers just push in. And now we've got Terran on a lifted natural. With remember, he has 50 oh, Lurkers. Oh, he didn't have enough. Oh, he he lost the Lurker under the Dark Swarm. He nope. didn't quite have enough for Swarm. Oh my oh, gosh, no. that was so unfortunate. He lost both. That's not ideal, man. I can't believe that. Uh, he was like two energy away from having oh. a, a swarm when he first walked in with the two lurkers. Yeah, I think he, I think he messed up by pushing with the defiler into the ramp. If he could have just held the natural with Hydra Lurker and just swarmed over and over and over, maybe he could get his four bases up and running. But now Mihu's back out onto the map, and he still hasn't lost any tanks. He's got a huge marine medic army. He's now retaking his natural. I'm sure he's got a command center floating to his bottom base in a second. Yep, there it is. Yeah, look at the money stacking as well. 1,500 uh, mineral resources. Uh, Eon Zerg, though, still does have the, you know, Defiler tech. He's on, uh, you know, four bases now. At least uh, he has a hatchery at four different bases. Um, I, drone count's this, pretty good. I think this is an unstoppable army. What do you stop this with? You've got... <laughs> two bases Cheeto that are dust. mega yeah Cheeto dust but 
Like, look at all the area you've got to cover. Like, you can't Cheeto dust every single position, and these are open bases. Well, he does at least get one Dark Swarm down. He's really going to need something to stop these vessels at some point. Vessel count's getting oh. out of hand. This is, oh. this is how you abuse Invader, man. You put those tanks on the high ground, they are so strong. How are you going to kill them? Like, you're going to have to commit so much to just trying to take down three tanks. Yeah, that's true. They have to loop all the way around. Meanwhile, these can just kind of sit and siege everything. Yeah. We've got another Ling Lurker attacking to the natural, but it's only one Lurker. I don't think he will rack up that many SCVs, oh. but there's no reaction, actually, okay? Oh, oh, he could shut down the natural and the third base at the same time? No, there's here. It's here. Still, good good damage. Nice little yeah. counter there from Eon Zerg. Yeah, that's a good idea. He got that Lurker kill, or that Lurker says it has nine kills. That's a that's a lot of damage, actually. Look at Mihu's Lurker count now, 38. Wow. Yeah, you're right. It's still alive, man. <laughs> oh, you radiated. Okay. Yeah, it's finally going to fall, but not before it gets another couple kills. <laughs> uh, yeah. Crazy. Well, we are we got the Eon Zerg Lurker Hydra transition going on now. Yep. And we still have heavily upgraded bio, though, with a lot of vessels. I noticed that the Lurkers don't... Oh, he, he has no armor machine. There are no armor upgrades on Terran. That means Lurkers are still strong. Oh, he is finally getting that underway, but yeah, these Lurkers are doing some serious damage here, it looks like. Uh, oh, man, okay, we've got a... we need a Defiler with our army. Though. I, think it, I think this is it. We've got a base trade scenario. Who can deal the most damage? This third base is 100% dead. Fourth base also exposed. Eons are, he's gonna try and counter. He's got a really big army, but like you said, there's no Defiler. Yeah, no Defiler here. See the Lurkers even just continuing to walk forward. We'll at least kill off this third base, but look at the tank positioning there from Mihu on the high ground. It's yeah. inevitably gonna continue cleaning up these Lurker Hydra forces. Oh man, he can't lose these Hydras and not at least get the Command Center and It doesn't look like he's gonna get the Command Center because it's gonna barely yeah. survive. Yeah, really unfortunate there, um, but yikes. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Uh, I think that, I think that Eon's is just running out of steam. He's got his three bases, but he doesn't have anything to defend it really anymore. Terran's almost doubling the supply. Terran's got their critical armor upgrade now, whereas I think Zerg doesn't have damage. Now that's one way to get back in the game. Plague, he needs to kill all of these vessels though. Yeah, he's gonna need to continue these plagues. At least he's getting efficient. Uh, nope. Well, I was gonna say, at least he's consuming the dead units, but nope. Swarm not quite able to go down. And it looks like oh. Me who just has an overwhelming force at this point. He got another one. Oh, but he got he got two more vessels. That's great. Yeah, that was those are big big pickups. A few more weak ones uh, as well in the fight. Oh man, this is a lot of bio though. Yeah, but the Zerg has plus one weapons, so they can shred through the armor. Oh, goodbye. Get back. Wow, you called it. And. He's got to get back with these vessels, man. They're so weak. Oh, he's going to oh, lose them, actually. Oh. Okay. I mean, that's big. <laughs> well, that's how wow. you get back into the game, dude. That's, what, eight vessels then? There are yeah. no vessels now. Still those three siege tanks on that high ground mid-right. There's no way Eon Zerg's going to be able to take a fourth. Well, we'll see. That is so many Hydras. That is just a billion hydrants. Oh, me who? Oh, me who I mean, you, you gotta, gotta stand, stand dude! <laughs> just walks into the lurker spines once again. He still manages to not lose his entire army. He's gonna push these hydras back. One marine, one medic, not gonna be able to push through that though, but what a crazy game. Desperately trying to save their third bases, both players are. Lurker on the left side, Ooh. he's gonna deal a ton of damage. This yeah, army nice is going to get killed off. Yeah, he is able to kind of stop this counter, at least for now. But, I mean, look at all the blue moving across the map now, though. This is going to be a very oh, big force yeah. coming in.
from you. Yeah, and if he's, uh, he's started to move at least one tank with his army too. There's still not a lot of vessels though. There's no defiler. Okay, there it is. One defiler. And Mingu, of course, instantly tries to get rid of it. Only gonna get off a single Dark Swarm though. I don't think that's enough. Yeah, even the lurkers that he has are being irradiated. Uh, it just kind of feels like me who's putting Eon Zerg on a timer. We do have a fourth base and it's pretty well saturated though. Eon yeah. Zerg, so. Yeah, he's, yeah. He's, he's hanging in there. Yeah, Eon Zerg's got the bases that he needs. It's just he needs to stabilize and, you know, catch up in supply. Right now he's down 60 supply. He's done a really good job to kill the high tech units over and over, but he's starved on gas. Yeah, he definitely is. I mean, he's just been on, you know, he's had his bases removed so many times. It's tough to keep up on, you know, your gas count when you're constantly losing your third and fourth base. Oh, no. Looks like this fourth base has been breached at the yeah. same time as the third. Yeah, at the same time as the third base, we've got Marines shredding the Hydras. That's a million Marines plus a million medics. And finally, could this be it? Could me who take down Eon Strike? The Defiler dies, there's no Lurkers, it's just Hydras. There it yeah. is, GG. GG is called, man. And me who going to be moving on uh, after a pretty insane series against Eon Zerg there. Yeah, those were exciting games, very back and forth, even though it was 3-1 for me who, you know, it could have been 3-1 for Eon Zerg. Circuit Breakers. That was a wild game. And then on the, as a follow-up, our second map, the retro game, like you were saying, if he gets down a Dark Swarm at mid-left, all of a sudden, me who's not mining. So yep. even though Eon Zerg dies 3-1, I think he played very well today. And if there was a rematch, you know, there's definitely a chance that Eon Zerg could win. Yeah, there definitely was. He had an incredible showing. And I mean, he's still gonna be a big, big problem uh, in this loser bracket. Uh, Looks like he'll be facing off against Zhao Shui, who we saw already had some issues ZVZ with Cross uh, yesterday. So, uh, you know, definitely not going to be a, an easy match, uh, you know, when you're facing off against Eons or ZVZ. <laughs> yeah. This is going to be a tough matchup. 